Well, with Debo Samuel officially requesting a trade in the background, Ravens were actually having a presser today that I'm not sure if many people even caught. Uh, but anyway, uh, before we get into this presser, something that I got to tell y'all, uh, just give you a quick reminder. Sometimes I got to remind myself of it, too. Not everything has to be explained. Not, not everything has to be explained and not everybody deserves an explanation from you. But anyway, um, so the, the presser today, it started off with strength and conditioning coach Steve Saunders. Uh, and he said philosophically, <laughs> remember that word, uh, that they made a few tweaks to their training program. And he, he was saying a lot of other stuff, too. But anyway, it, next, next up was Rashad Bateman. Ravens, of course, their first round draft pick, their wide receiver from last year. Um, and he said that uh, they asked him about Batman. First off, he said Batman was a 10 out of 10. He said he was the one that directed it and he played in it. So look at that boy Rashad Bateman over there. Acting in movies, he's still a wide receiver in the NFL, but he over there being in movies and stuff too, and acting and directing all at the same time. That's crazy. It's a joke. Relax. Cause I know it's going to be some people. Oh, you really thought Rashad Bateman was Batman? Anyway, gosh. Um, they he was asked about the video. <laughs> he was asked about the videos uh, of him and Lamar Jackson uh, working out, and he said that it's been really important uh, just for them to get that chemistry back. Uh, since they both ended up missing time with injury. Of course, Rashad Bateman at the beginning of the season uh, and then Lamar Jackson at the end of the season. So they never really got to consistently uh, get it going. So them building up that rapport, that would just, oh, that would just take them to a whole nother level, man. And it would help the offense out so much like we've been talking about before, too. Um, he said that he feels comfortable. Uh, he said the NFL was a big mental step for him, uh, and he said now he knows how to move a lot more uh, going into year two and that he's excited for it. Uh, as far as his biggest takeaway from last year, he said it's being prepared when your time is called. I uh, said last year the Ravens were in so many situations where the next guy had to be available. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. He, you could have said it, Rashad, baby, and I would have been mad at you, but anyway. Um, he said that having a full offseason program is very beneficial. Uh, and that that face to face is, is very important. Um, and he talked about how with him and Lamar, they got together a few times uh, to get that work in. And he said that um, Proche and Benjamin, we, and we saw the video of Proche. We saw the video uh, with Benjamin Victor in there, too. But he did mention that they were there uh, as well. And it's something that they had already planned on doing. Um, he said as far as his injury, uh, it, it impacted him a lot because he had never been injured before. Uh, said he never missed a game and never missed practice before, so it was something different that he had to take some time to get used to. Uh, as far as his number change, because that had been a big topic of conversation, him changing to number seven, uh, he said that's this is mom's favorite number. And when he said that, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I, I get it. I, I would make the change too. Um, they asked him, what, what, what should fans expect from you this year? What should they expect? And he said he doesn't want to say what he's going to do this year as far as what they should expect. He said he's just going to get to work. Uh, and he said he'll be at the draft party and tuned in to whoever the Ravens end up bringing in. And that was it from Rashad Bateman. Uh, he just sounded happy. Sounded like he was excited. Um, sounded like he's just, just happy to be back around everybody. That's what all these guys, like Bateman, Ricard, especially Bynes. Bynes more than anybody. Bynes sounded super excited. Uh, but we'll talk about Bynes in a couple of minutes. Next up was Patrick Ricard. And he said it feels good to be back to a normal offseason. I uh, said the last two years, they were pretty weird, having to do everything from Zoom. Uh, now, somebody mentioned how Patrick Ricard, he looked jacked already. Uh, and it, they asked him if he even took any time off. And he said that he did. Uh, and he said him and his wife, they traveled. Uh, and he slowly started building up when it came to his workouts. And that's important. That's important to take. Whatever you do, it's important to take time off so you can whew, breathe, relax, enjoy yourself, enjoy your family, all that stuff. Because uh, you just you can't just keep going nonstop at whatever it is that you're doing. You need uh, breaks. Anyway, um, he was asked if there was a point in the process if he thought that he wouldn't be back with the Ravens. And he said, yeah, said that they negotiated during the season, but they just didn't get it done. But that he's excited that he is back. And of course, him, he signed what a three year deal with the Ravens, I think. Um, and that with him having negotiated with the Ravens during the season, with Bradley Bozeman having negotiated with the Ravens during the season. I'm sure there's some other ones, too. But that just goes to show the Air DaCosta's style of doing things. Um, again, he likes to try to do it early rather than later. Uh, Mark Andrews is a prime example of that. And there have been plenty of others under Eric DaCosta where he signed him to an, to an extension early rather than later, rather than waiting to when their contract is up. It obviously doesn't always work out like that, but 
that's something. That's one thing that he did stick by uh, when he first introduced himself as Ravens GM. He said that he was going to do that. He was going to try to sign guys to deals early uh, rather than later. And that also goes for uh, cutting and releasing players, too. Um, as far as the training reg regimen, he said uh, they've been stretching more and really going through the mechanics of warming up a lot more. said they've been taking less reps, uh, but he said that he thinks they're trying to tone stuff down a bit. Um, and this part, I, I appreciated this part. He said that uh, since he didn't play offense in college uh, and he's on like his third or fourth tight end coach. Yes, tight end coach. Uh, he said that it's, it's good to get another perspective on the game because it helps him grow as a player. And I, I, I did appreciate that because it does. Um, especially since, yeah, he was a what he was a defensive lineman uh, in college, uh, and of course, Ravens they picked him up as an undrafted guy and had him flip to fullback just to try it out, and it worked. It worked. So for him, just being a sponge and gaining all the possible knowledge he can get uh, as an offensive player, it'll uh, go in his favor. Now, next up was Josh Bynes. Um, he said that he likes being here. At the facility being with the Ravens now as opposed to having to show up later and get that call in the middle of the season. So because <laughs> we know how that went a um, couple times. Uh, he said that uh, in the offseason in free agency, he talked to some other teams, too, uh, but he ended up back home. Um, he said he likes being here now and really getting the playbook and the foundation set up now. Uh, and he said that they're seeking revenge and vengeance at the end of the day. From how last season went Well I think the first person That Ravens really need to get uh, Revenge and vengeance on uh, Is the, the training table Is a health Because that, that's what really Just killed their season last year There was some other stuff too now um, But yeah it, it started with the health uh, But anyway He said that Mike McDonald Used to be his linebacker coach So he's excited to see What he does with the defense uh, And Ryan Mink asked about Are there any differences In the playbook And Bynes he just He wasn't getting into all that He said nope I ain't telling nothing I ain't saying nothing Nope because I ain't trying To give nobody an advantage uh, But yeah he just seemed like Super super happy Super bubbly Super energetic He just just seemed hype man um, Then Patrick Queen Patrick Queen uh, He said this offseason He watched a lot of film uh, He said the bad spots They were bad he said They were bad But he said the good spots Were great So I said, okay, cool. Uh, he said that uh, over the season, he improved on getting off blocks. Um, he said that he really wants to improve on everything. Um, but one of the things that he named specifically was really finding where the, the QB is going with the ball. Uh, so I guess that just, just his awareness um, that he's trying to work on right now. Um, he said he's comfortable playing either Mike, I'm, excuse me, either linebacker spot, Mike, Will, whatever, um, since he, he has experience with both. He talked about Derek Stingley. Uh, and he said with Derek Stingley when he came in that he was different. Ever since the day he came in, he said you could just see it, how he was locking down Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase. And he said if he falls to the Ravens, then he'll be really happy. Uh, and he said you can tell the difference in the style of coaching uh, when it comes to Zach Orr since he played the game and he played on a Pro Bowl level. So he said that it'll be easy to talk to him like if they see something uh, on the field, then he'll be able to relate to it a lot more than some other coaches would be able to. Um. He also talked about whoever the Ravens draft, he'll be happy with it. Uh, he did say that he saw some stuff on the big guy from Georgia. Uh, Jordan Davis is who he's talking about. Because somebody asked, oh, how would it be like if you had a big guy in front of you? Because, I mean, again, like we've been saying, that would make everybody's job easier, especially Patrick Queen. Though. Now, this is something that I did not even realize, but I appreciated it. I think it was Jeff Zrebic that asked it. He said uh, with Patrick Queen, he was one of four or five guys on the team that played all 17 games. I um I didn't even realize there was anybody who did that. I really did. If you would have asked me like, oh, what, what play on the Ravens played every single game last year? On top of my head, I would have said nobody. I would have said, nope, nobody did. Um, but maybe, maybe was Duvernay one of them too? I think maybe Duvernay might have been one. And I mean, I ain't going to try to remember everybody right now, but yeah. That's that's crazy that somebody actually lasted the whole season last year. Um, and he said that uh, you go from as far as the injuries, he said you, when you go from Marcus Peters to a guy and he said he wasn't trying to be like disrespectful or anything like that. But he said just there's nobody who's Marcus Peters. There's nobody who's Marlon Humphrey. So to go from those guys to anybody after them is going to be hard. Um, so I'm sure Anthony Avery looking around like, man, that's really but, you know, he ain't mean no disrespect. Uh, and then last but certainly not least was Justin Matabike. And he, he was quick. 
He, he was like in and out. Um, he said he was excited to have Calais Campbell back. Said he felt like he uh, took a step up from his rookie year, but he still has a lot to prove. And that's true. Uh, I agree. I think we would all agree with that. Um, he said after having two sacks, uh, that it's a goal um, to really work on his footwork uh, and really work on his pass rush too so he can really perfect uh, his craft. So it was nice to um, hear from some of the different Ravens, um, some guys who the Ravens end up bringing back, and with Josh Bynes and um, Patrick Ricard, and some guys who are going into their second, third years, Patrick Queen um, and Matt Abike going into their third, and then Rashad Bateman going into his second. So should be a fun season, fun off season. Uh, we'll see whatever else it brings, um, and then – you know, so on and so forth. Shout out to Debo Sammy, though. Whew, this is <laughs> this whole offseason been crazy. I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I'll see y'all in the next video. We out.